Okay, so. Is this the one for JESE? Nope, this is for, that one was a lot closer to what I, that was pretty clean. Okay. Okay, you're gonna see when you open this drawing, okay. it, it does not look like that. Okay, so we've talked about this before. If our team isn't doing the survey, then we don't usually worry about the drawing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we usually only worry about the drawing if we're doing the survey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on this job from Moffitt, we did the survey. Okay. So I need to ship a drawing, okay, a cleaned up drawing. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through this list of stuff to do, um, and you're going to you're going to have to come and get me. You're not going to remember all this, but we're going to talk about all of it, okay? And uh, it doesn't necessarily even have to be in order, uh, but this order works too, I think. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go up and you're going to clean up the lines, and you're going to consolidate the multiple lines, okay? So I'm going to describe. I'm going to run through this list. And I'm going to show you an example. Okay. So we're going to clean up the lines. You're going to straighten up the vaults. The vault lids. Okay. You're going to add what we call the boats. Those have a type, a size, and an ID. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have you seen those? Yeah. Okay. So you know what a boat is. So we'll add the boats. We'll consolidate where we have clustered symbols. Um, we're going to add a table for the lines and the pipes and add a table for the structures and I need to set those up for you. Okay. Why don't you, when we get out of here, send me an email and say, Landon, I need my tables okay. for the utility drawings. So I don't yeah, to do that. We should have a standard set of utility mapping notes that go into yeah, each drawing. I probably need to write these. We might have some, but I need to look at them. So you need to get these for me. And usually that's something that you're just going to cut and paste. Okay, do you want okay. that in the email too? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to add depth markers. Okay, and I think we're going to do that with a, a special civil 3D point stop. I did it on Harrison, I have to go find it. When you get to this step, you're just going to come and get me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we need to check and label crossings. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. This is what you get when the crew comes in. Okay, so we got a couple problems here. First of all, does the water line really do this? Probably not. Probably not. So you got to remember when the guys are locating that, you know, they could be off, you know, it's pretty common to be off a foot, it's, you know, they could be off two feet. Okay. Sometimes there's a wire that wraps around the pipe, and so they're, they're finding that. It's edge of the wire, right? Well, I mean, if you think about it, you've got a big old pipe like this. It's just looking down, if this is your pipe. And they, and they spiraled the tracer wire around it, like a candy cane. Mm -hmm. He's going to pick it up here, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And so your, your line's going to wander a little bit, depending on, this depends on how that tracer wire is wound, okay? So these things aren't always straight. So I'm going to give you, a, as a general rule, if you're within 20, 24 inches, 2 feet, you can straighten it out. And I might even push that a little more if you can talk to me. But if these wobbles are less than 2 feet, in other words, if you pull a line over like this and it's less than 2 feet, you're going to straighten it out. Yeah. Okay? So what we really want, especially when you got a structure on each side, Right? We know that line goes between the vault and the valve, right? Yeah. So you're going to get rid of the walls. You're going to say, like that. Right. Okay? This is really ugly. So on the vaults, you're going to 90 these. Okay? Make them nice and square, because that's what they look like in real life. And what you can do is I would just pull the dimensions. You don't have to get super crazy about this, but usually these are going to be some interval of, of feet. Or a half a foot, right? Are the dimensions on all of them? No, you don't have to dimension them. I'm just oh. saying they're not they're not really 1.62 feet okay. wide, right? Mm -hmm. So if I saw this, I'd probably I'd either round it down to 1.5 or round it up to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can straighten out the vaults. Same thing with this line here, right? You're gonna get rid of all these little jogs. We know we got valves to valves. You can just go ahead and straight line that. Okay.
Now this is a little bit tricky, so let me explain how I want you to straighten these out. Okay. So if we've got some points. Okay. So in this drawing that Pat did, he's already got a polyline. I'm going to draw it in a different color, purple. He's got a polyline that goes like this. Okay. I don't want you to delete that. What I want you to do is draw another line, a construction line, mm -hmm. from here to here and from here to here. Okay. Then you're going to take these nodes, and it doesn't have to be exact. Just get it close. You're going to grab this purple polyline, and you're going to pull it over perpendicular and snap it to right here. And you're going to pull this up and snap it. Pull it and snap it. Because what I want the when you're actual point itself. Right? Yes. What I want when you're done is I want the polyline. I'm going to draw these purples where the nodes are at. I want a polyline with these nodes wherever they shot a point on the. Okay. Because what we got to do is then we got to go into the polylines and make sure these nodes are at the right elevation based on the depth. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. But I don't want a wobbly polyline. I want a straight one. Okay. And then, it, this doesn't happen very much with water or storm and sewer, but with electrical, calm, and sometimes gas, you'll get something like this. Okay? These lines probably do not cross each other like that. Okay? There was a lot like that at the Ben Holt School. Yeah. This probably does not do this. And in fact, when those wires get close enough together, mm -hmm. the locator can't even tell them apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you a rule of thumb. If it's two lines or less that run in parallel, Okay, this is what I say, consolidate multiple, I should say parallel under here. If it's two lines or less, then you can leave them separate. Okay, but you're going to do one as an offset of the other. Let me just try this a little bit more. So these come out like this, let's say. Okay. So right here we've got a section where they're running together, right? Okay, what, what I want you to do is pick the center. Take the center line, the line that's in the middle, and straighten it out, like we talked about over, over here. Okay. And you're going to take some offset that's a reasonable one foot, you know, one foot or two foot or three foot, and you're just going to offset that for your other line. Okay, that's if there's only two lines. Because those lines really run in parallel right there, right? Okay, now, if there's three or more, so then when they diverge, when they split, then you can leave them separate. Okay? Would there be a case where they're actually laid on top of each other? Yeah, and we can't tell, but graphically I want to show that there's two lines there. Okay? So yeah, they might, they might be on top of each other, they might be four inches apart, right? Mm -hmm. But we're trying to graphically show that there's two lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I don't want you to do that if there's three or more lines. Like maybe there's eight lines in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do if there's that many is you're going to show one line. like this, this is where they branch off, okay? And then right here, let's just say this has got three individual lines, okay, and this is one line. When they're in the same trench, you're just, we're gonna put in a multi-leader that's gonna say four communication lines. I didn't make my box big enough, sorry. Run in parallel. So that way you can just look and say, oh, hey, there's four lines there together, right? I don't want to show them four feet across because it's mm -hmm. probably not that wide. They're probably together, right? Mm -hmm. And then same thing down here because this is three or more, you would get a note. And then if one of these lines branches off and you go to two, and I don't mind, then you can come out and just split these like this out around okay. in parallel, okay? Does that make sense? Yep. So that's just kind of my rule of thumb. Okay, so that takes care of number one. Number two is pretty easy, right? We're going to straighten the bolts out. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky. We need to pick a scale that we're working at. To start, I want you to draw the bolts real life dimensions based on the points. Okay? It may be if we're working at a big enough scale, like if we were working at one to one inch to 100 or something, that we come up with a block because these bolts are going to get too small. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to worry about that for now. Draw them, draw them real life size, okay? 
Okay, you're gonna add the boats. I don't have to explain that to you. We have a numbering system though, so make sure I give that to you and you use it. Okay. Where we have symbols that are clustered together like this at whatever scale we're at, so this depends on your scale. Okay, but if you get in here and these symbols overlap for like our water valve, you're gonna do the same thing you kinda of do here with the lines. You're gonna show one symbol. And then we're just gonna say, have a little leader and we're gonna say, four water valves, or four gas valves, or whatever. Okay? I'm going to give you the tables. I'm going to work on the notes. So the depth marker, I don't know, I've got some funky little symbol. And uh, wherever we shoot a depth, and there's a point, it, it does like a, I can't remember. It looks something like this, I think. And this, I've got a little label style set up that gives you the gives you the depth, I think, to the nearest tenth. Now, depending on how the crew shot their depths, we got to go in and fix, you might have to go in and edit that description. But you should be able to look at this and see where we shot a depth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, wherever we have a crossing, so right here we have a water, water line crossing a, I call it a con, but it's the wrong color, but whatever, you're not going to judge, right? We got a water line cross and a column. Wherever we have a crossing, I need a label. And we either need a depth or we need to know that we didn't get a depth because crossings are usually really important. So like, let's just say we didn't get a depth right here. You're just going to say communication. Good thing I don't hand draft because I never make enough room. Communication, water, crossing. No depth. But well, we would need a depth for at least one of them, right? You're just going to say, we didn't get a depth here. So, okay. depending on what we're doing, it's not always critical, but a lot of times it is. So, if I've got a crossing and we don't have a depth taken at the crossing, I just want to note that. No depth. Okay. What's crossing? Communication and water. Crossing. No depth. If you've got a depth there, then instead of no depth, you'll put the depth. 3.2 feet to whatever utility is the highest. Okay. okay? That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so I got a drawing I'm going to send you. That'll keep you busy probably till you leave tomorrow. That way I can get caught up and have something for you whenever you're coming back <laughs> Monday or whatever. Okay, so don't forget, email me about these things. I'll work on them this afternoon. Okay, but you've got enough to start with. So I'll send you the link to that drawing in CRC. Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you.